Welcome, welcome back to the bird's eye view. I am War Duck, and we're gonna be talking about. I'm gonna since I was a veteran. Um, we're gonna talk about this video, react to this video called uh, "11 Military Hacks That'll Make Your Life Easier." I wanted to go ahead and check this out and kind of see what they were talking about. See if I used any of these, or if any of you guys that um, are veterans used any of these, or if you got your other your own hacks. So let's check this out here. All right, so 11, so number 11 is duct taping your feet. I do remember that, uh, a lot of road marches and stuff. Taping so. your feet. Duct tape was originally invented to help World War II soldiers keep water out of their ammunition cases. It ca so I did not know that. I did not know that duct tape was invented for the U.S. military to keep water out of their ammunition containers. That's very interesting. Aim and Just Army Green, which, when combined with its waterproof properties, gave it the nickname wonder duct why, tape. Wonder why it's gray now. Nowadays, soldiers use it to prevent blisters and calluses caused by those notoriously uncomfortable military boots. You can do the same if you run long distances for extended periods of time, or you just have that one pair of shoes that always ends up giving you painful blisters. Just put some strips of duct tape over the areas on your feet that rub against your shoes the most to decrease the friction. You can also put a band-aid underneath if you already have a blister there. So I did do that a few times. We had these 12 mile road marches that we had to do under three hours and you always got blisters. It was always a thing. So um, I did do that a lot, but normally uh, like there's easy ways to break in military boots, take the, the canned shaving cream and then get your boots nice and soaking wet. Fill them up with shaving cream and leave them for a couple of hours or something. And then put them on with the shaving cream and lace them up tight and walk around with them for a while. Uh, it, it like molds them right around your feet and, and uh, help me not get blisters when I was doing regular stuff. But that 12 mile road march in under three hours always had blisters. Even with the duct tape, it did help. They weren't as severe, um, but... But man, that's rough. I always got like major hot spots and stuff. All right, let's move on here. Number 10, ladder lacing for added ankle support. Soldiers might have to wear boots all the time. I never did this. Most of us bust them out during the winter. And you know what's common in winter? Slippery patches of ice that can send you to the hospital with a sprained ankle. For added ankle support, lace your boots the military way. Here's the technique. One. Start at the bottom pair of eyelets. Make sure to lace the string from the inside out. Two, next, put the lace through the eyelet that's right above the one it's coming out of on the same side. Do it from the outside in. Three, cross the laces in the middle, pull them up and under the opposite lace on the other side, and bring them vertically through the eyelet on the next level, like you did in step two. Four, repeat steps number two and three until you reach the top. Five, tie your shoestrings with a basic bow or a double knot for a better hold. If you still have a lot of lace left, although you shouldn't with this laddering technique, just wrap it around your ankle and then tie it. Tuck the remaining laces inside your shoe. The steps sound complicated, but you'll get it down really fast with some practice. Number so I never ever did that. Um, I did, however, there was a spot where like the boot flexes right at your ankle. And I did skip a lace right there um, because it would like always bind up and stuff. But I never did this whole laddering thing. I think it would be really hard to like get your boots on and off with all that extra lacing being knotted up together. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I never used that one. So I did wrap them around the ankle because they were so long. But uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. Number nine maxi pads for first aid hmm. in case yeah, of an emergency about this you can use sanitary pads to prevent a wound from bleeding out i mean the whole purpose of a maxi pad is to absorb blood flow right doctors even gave this hack their stamp of approval based on a study by canada's dalhousie university and st john regional hospital sanitary napkins are just as hygienic as sterile gauze all you gotta do is place a maxi pad over the wound and bind it down with duct tape of course, you'll still need emergency medical services, but this is a useful hack when you're in a pinch. So, so that one I did know that, you know, like, uh, especially, 
you know, you got like major wounds and you're and there's all of this stuff going on real quick. You just slap that on there, tape it down, and it should hold for a while until you can get medical attention. I did know about that one. Number eight, putting sugar on wounds. That's old, old school. Speaking of first aid in a pinch, this you can is put really sugar old on a school. wound to prevent bacterial infection. Don't worry, because this unconventional medical treatment has scientific backing based on a study by the University of Arizona's College of Medicine. Yeah, this is Not like to mention, it was one of the old, most old, old medicine in ancient times. Yeah, yeah, there you, you see, go. Bacteria can't multiply in a super sugary environment, so you can Great. cover the wound with a sugar paste or just plain sugar. Keep it covered like this until you can get to a medical professional or one gets to you. Number seven, running tights for added warmth. Running or compression tights aren't just for jogging or making a fashion statement. You can wear them under almost any pants without them being noticeable. This is a lifesaver when it comes to staying warm in really low temperatures. So, whether you're ice skating or going for a hike in some cold regions... So, I don't know how many military people use this one. We had like poly pros was like long john underwear and since I was up at Fort Drum where it's cold as hell all the time, uh like we always wore that underneath um you know our uniforms but it really what keeps you warm is air pockets, trapping air pockets in between different layers. That's kind of what keeps you warm. So I think that's what they're going for. I don't I don't really know otherwise. Region, don't forget to put your running. I don't see a lot of first. many people using running tights. It's not uniform. Number you know? six, super shiny shoes. There's a very particular hack when it comes to those super shiny Spitting soldier shoes. Say that five times fast. Super shiny soldier shoes. Super shiny soldier shoes. Super shiny soldier shoes. Super shiny. Okay. <laughs> Take a generous amount of shoe shine, rub it on your leather shoes or boots, and let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. Let it then harden. go over the area with a lighter or flame and get ready to see uh, your own see, reflection. That's a different way. For a finishing touch, use a clean, damp cloth to polish the surface. All right, so a lot of times what we did is we actually would um, heat the polish up in the little con container and then put it on, let it sit, and then take an air dryer and uh like heat it up just a little bit and then take a damp cloth or we were all you know you don't have a lot of time to get damp cloth so you just wrap the hand around spit on it or dab it in water from the sink and then and then shine it up yeah we did that a lot especially in basic training and stuff oh and please be extra careful when it comes to being near a flame if your shoes aren't made from a fire resistant material like real leather do not try this hack Number five, the military tuck. If your shirt is a little too big for you, maybe you've recently lost some weight and haven't been able to buy new clothes, tucking it and having it look nice can seem an impossible task. Just use the military fold and tuck technique to look crisp and professional in an ill-fitted shirt. Pull it tight around Here's your back and tuck it? it? Is that what One, they're talking about? Tuck in your shirt, but leave your pants unbuttoned for the meantime. Two, put your yeah. thumb and forefinger <laughs> to pinch both exactly sides what of your they're shirt doing, seams. Yep. Three, pull it down until the fabric is taut. Four, fold each side backwards. Five, button up your pants and throw <laughs> on a belt to keep the pleats in place. Yeah. Number four, I remember that one. and Vaseline as a fire starter. Now, before you throw that bottle of I never used this one. We didn't garbage, really have fires out when we were out and about. In your house, listen to this. Dr. Elizabeth Winslow, a research consultant at the Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas, attests that Vaseline is not a fire risk. Cotton, however, is a great fire starter. The only downside is it burns up too fast. So by covering cotton balls in petroleum jelly and lighting them on fire, you get a strong but... St so this, is, this isn't something that I would think anybody used in the military simply because... You're not out there camping, right? Like at night, it's you're not camping, and light gives your position away. I don't see this really being a military hack. This is more like a survival camping hack, um, especially if you're going into wet environments. This is really good. Is is just um, get a little container, take a few cotton balls. Uh, get um, Vaseline on them and then put them in a, the little container and keep them with you if you're going to a wet environment. 
because these will start a fire even if even in a wet environment uh the, the vaseline repels water anyway so this would work steady flame that keeps on burning a great hack next time you go camping number three lose a tail when driving if you ever feel like the driver in your rearview mirror is following you, all you gotta do is make four consecutive turns in a row. Okay, so this is definitely not a military life hack. I don't know where they're getting this one. I don't know any situation unless you're like special operator that you would be doing this. Um, so this is just, I don't know what this one's all about. This is usually the best way to lose a tail. If you still can see your alleged pursuer, please call emergency service right away or just drive to the nearest police station. Right, this one's kind of dumb. Like, how are you losing your tail from taking two or from taking four left turns? I mean, all you're going to do is confirm they're following you, but you're definitely not going to lose them. And if somebody's following you anyway, like they said, just call 911 and let the cops sort it out so you don't have to deal with it. Or just drive to the police station. They'll, they'll, you'll probably lose them then. I don't... This one's... This one's kind of silly. And definitely not a military thing. Number two. Making a pristine bed. This list wouldn't be complete without instruction on how to make that iconic, crisp military bed. <laughs> Here's how to get those corners no fitted sheet can achieve. One. Start by tucking the bottom of the sheet between the mattress and box spring. Make sure there are no wrinkles or bunching. Two, do the same thing on the head of the bed as you did at the foot, making sure to pull that sheet taut. Three, pinch the sheet about 16 inches away from one of the bottom corners and lift it up a bit. Tuck in the material between the corner and your fingers. Four, put your finger against the corner to keep it sharp and fold the rest of the material over. You should end up with a 45 degree line in the sheet on the outside of the corner. Five, repeat the steps for the rest of the bed corners. All right, so that one, like, I don't, sure it'll look nice, but that's definitely not military. Um, if you're going into basic training, don't use that. I'll tell you right now, we spent a lot of time making beds and sheets and I remember in basic training, you would like have somebody pull the other side and then like hook it and like you'd have holes in your blanket and stuff because you were trying to hook it on the spring stuff to keep it tight. Otherwise, the moment somebody sat on it or touched it, like all the stuff would just pull back up. And um, yeah, that'll it'll look nice for a minute until somebody touches it. But that's definitely not uh, what you're doing in the military. Definitely not. Number one, peeing in the shower? Urinating in the shower might be a controversial topic in some households or even a dirty little secret for some people. But according to the medical community, it actually prevents and cures athlete's foot. Urine has natural properties like uric acid and ammonia that help fight fungal infections. So if you think about it, you're pretty much giving yourself an instant spa treatment free of charge. Not to mention, of course, you'll save a ton on your water bill and decrease your ecological footprint. Sounds like a... So, um... Sure. Um... Peeing in the shower, like, if you got Ashley's foot, I guess? Or if you're, like, in a hurry, it might save you a few minutes? Uh, I don't remember anybody in the military doing this especially in basic training or AIT where like, like you were having to hot swap showers cause you didn't have any time. And, and in basic, the water was so flipping cold. I just remember like you would have like three or four dudes and like somebody would go in and get wet and they would step out and then they would soap up and the next person would step in and you would like rotate around, um, that way everybody could get their shower and get dressed and make formation before the drill sergeant flipped out and lost it on you. Um, I don't know that this is like a big thing in the military that peeing in showers. Uh, I mean, I don't, there's really nothing wrong with it. You know, saves on water and stuff like that, but I don't really see this being like a military thing. So I don't know. 11 military hacks that make your life easier sure some of them were definitely military driven 
The rest of them were just kind of made up. Um, but all right, there you go. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll take some more of these military hack videos, but um, that one, yeah, 50 50. It's all right. There's definitely some things I could see people using, but uh, definitely some things that, that were definitely just not military at all. But uh, all right, everybody, uh, much love, and I will catch you next time. If you lie to the government, they'll put you in prison. But when they lie to all of us, it's called being a politician. You think taking guns away will save our kids from the killings? But your pro-choice abortion kills way more children. If America's so terrible and racist, it probably isn't safe to encourage immigration. Just saying, all the contradictions are embarrassing. You know who hates America the most? Americans.